Um, yeah, so congratulations to all of the spellers here today. We have um, 17 spellers who have qualified for our juniors finals out of about um, 100 from the semifinals yesterday. And so congratulations to all of you guys. This is an awesome accomplishment. And i um, just going to go through a couple of rules. You guys have heard the same thing yesterday, but just want to say it again so that everyone is on the same page. Um, but we're live streaming the finals for this on the Spell Pundit Facebook page. And so at this point, if parents can leave um, the spellers rooms, um, parents can watch the B on, um, on Facebook and um, keep up to date with how their speller is doing. Um, yeah, last thing is just to introduce the judges. So um, really quickly, our pronouncer is uh, Shara Dasari. He um, is one of the co-founders of Skull Pundit and is currently a senior in high school. Um, our bell judge is Simone Kaplan, who is currently a freshman in high school and she'll be, um, she'll be our bell judge. So she'll let you know, you know, if you've got the word correct or incorrect. Um, our roots judge is Sylvie, who is a freshman at Dartmouth University. And um, she'll be able to answer any of your roots questions. And then um, I will be the timing judge. Um, and, and yeah, let's get started with speller number two. I'm third grade. All right, are you ready? Yes. Okay, uh, your word is decor. Decor. Can I have all the information, please? Yeah, so there's three pronunciations. It's decor, decor, or decor. Uh, it's a noun and it comes from French. It means ornamentation, especially the style or mode of interior design as of a room or building. And the sentence is Emma's reading room decor is a tasteful combination of rich purple and elegant cream. Oh, decor, am I saying it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Decor. D E C O R. Decor. That is correct. Next speller is speller three. All right. Um, um, could you? Yeah, could you just say something to? I'm in fourth grade. All right. Okay, uh, your word has a homonym, so I'll give you the part of speech and definition. Uh, so your word is symbols. It's a noun plural, and it means large brass plates that make a clashing sound when struck together or hit with a large drumstick. S-Y-M-B-A-L-S. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is C Y M B A L S. Good job. Next speller is speller 14. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is jotted. Uh, it means to write briefly or hurriedly. Jotted. May I have all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is jotted. It's a verb and it comes from Latin. It means to write briefly or hurriedly. And it, the sentence is Jessica ripped out a piece of paper from one of her notebooks and jotted down Sarah's phone number. Okay, jotted. J O E T E D, jotted. That is correct. Next speller is speller 20. Hi. Hi. All right, uh, your word is simmer. Simmer, can I please have the definition? Uh, simmer means to stew gently with a bubbling sound below or just at the boiling point. Can I please have the language of origin? Uh, it's an alteration of Middle English from imitative origin. Simmer, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, Simmer. Simmer. S-I-M-M-E-R, Simmer. That is correct. Next speller is speller 24. 
Ready. All right. Uh, your word is groove. Can I have all information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is groove. It's a noun and it comes from Middle English. It means a long, narrow cut or indentation in a surface, especially one cut into wood by a tool. And uh, the sense is the window slides along a deep metal groove to open and close. Groove, G-R-O-O-V-E. That is correct. Next speller is speller 26. Hi. All right, uh, your word is mutter. Mutter, can I have the definition please? Uh, it means to utter words indistinctly or in a low tone that is not easy to hear. Can I have the part of speech please? Mutter is a verb. Can I have the language of origin please? Uh, it comes from Middle English. Mutter. M U T T E R. Mutter. That is correct. Next speller is speller 30. Hello. Uh, all right. Uh, your word is decade. Decade. Um, is this Latin? Uh, it's Middle English from Latin. Yeah. Okay. Um, can I have the uh, definition, please? Uh, it means a period of 10 years. Okay, decade. D E C A D E, decade. That is correct. Next speller is speller 32. Hi. All right. Uh, uh, your word is mildew. Mildew. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it can be pronounced mildew or mildew. Can I have the definition, please? Uh, mildew means a thin whitish coating consisting of minute fungi growing on plants or damp organic materials such as paper. Um, can you please put it in the sentence? Um, Michael cleaned the patches of mildew on the walls. Mildew. M I L D E W. Mildew. That is correct. Next speller is speller 35. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, sorry. Uh, your word is gelato. Gelato, can I have all the information? Yeah, so it can be pronounced gelato or gelato. It's a noun and it comes from Italian. Uh, gelato means a soft, rich Italian ice cream containing almost no air. And the sense is Catherine likes to eat fresh gelato every day whenever she visits Europe. Gelato. G E. L A T O gelato. That is correct. Next speller is speller sixty-three. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is shortfall. Shortfall. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is shortfall. Again, a shortfall. Can you give me all the information about this word? Yeah, so the word is shortfall. It's a noun and it's made up of two Middle English parts. Uh, it means a deficit of something required or expected. And the sense is the county had to close three of its four libraries because of a budget, sh because of a budget shortfall. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is shortfall. Shortfall. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Okay, shortfall. A 
S H O R T F A L L short fall. That is correct. Next speller is speller 67. Hi, my name is Siona and I'm in third grade. All right. Uh, your word is neaten. Uh, it, it, it's a verb and it means to make something tidy and organized. Neaten. Am I saying it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Neaten. May I have it in a sentence, please? Yeah. Uh, Joanna is careful to neaten her desk before she leaves the office in the, in the evening. Neaten. N E A T E N. Neaten. That is correct. Next speller is speller 73. Hi. Uh, all right. Uh, your word is galaxy. Galaxy. Can I have all the information? Yeah. So the word is galaxy. And it can be also be pronounced Galaxy. Uh, it's a noun and it's from Middle English. Uh, it means one of billions of large systems of stars that make up the universe. And uh, the sentence is there are about 400 billion stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way. Galaxy. Am I pronouncing it rightly? Uh, it sounds right. Galaxy, G-A-L-A-X-Y. That is correct. Next speller is speller 80. Hello, my name is um, Shri Bhatshan and I'm in fourth grade. All right. Okay, uh, your word is cascade. Cascade, can I have all the information please? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is cascade. It's a noun and it's from French. It means a waterfall descending over a steep rocky surface. And it means, uh, uh, the sentence is, a beautiful rainbow gl glanced off the cascade of the waterfall. Cascade, cascade, am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Okay, cascade, C-A-S-C-A-D-E, cascade. That is correct. Next speller is speller 104. Hello. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is scooter. Scooter. May I have all the information, please? Yeah. So uh, the, yeah, the only pronunciation is scooter. Uh, it's a noun, and it's from Scandinavian and the Middle English part. It means a child's vehicle consisting of a low footboard on wheels steer, steered by handlebars. And the sense is Sam's mother made sure that he wore a helmet before riding his favorite red scooter. Scooter. S-C-O-O-T-E-R. Scooter. That is correct. Next speller is speller 108. Ready. All right. Okay. Uh, your word is trumpet. Trumpet. Can I have all the information, please? Yeah. So the only pronunciation is trumpet. It's a noun and it comes from Middle English. Uh, it means a brass musical instrument consisting of a narrow tube and a flared bell. And uh, the sense is Ethan played the trumpet professionally in a jazz combo. Trumpet. T. R U M P E T, trumpet. That is correct. Next speller is speller 113. Hi, my name is Gallery and I'm in third grade. Okay, uh, your word is restive. Um, could we see your hands, please, Gallery? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Restive. Can you give me all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is restive. It's an adjective and it comes from Middle English. Uh, it's used to describe a, describe a person as impatient of control or impatient of control, restraint, or delay. 
and uh, the sense is the audience was becoming restive as they waited for the performance to begin. Restive. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Restive. R-E-S-T-I-V-E. -E. Restive. That is correct. Next speller is speller 138. Hi, my name is Ruha and I'm in fourth grade. Okay, uh, your word is esteem. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is esteem. Esteem. May I please have all of the information? Yeah, so the, it can be pronounced as esteem or esteem. It's a noun and it comes from Middle English and it means to regard highly or favorably or to regard with respect or admiration. Uh, the sense is Amelia has long been held in high esteem by all of her colleagues. Esteem. E S T E E M esteem. That is correct. And that is the end of the round. How many spellers remain? Um, awesome. So it looks 16. like we have 16, 16 spellers remaining. Um, yeah, let's do, let's go straight into round two and then we can take a break after. Okay, uh, um, speller is zero, zero, 002. You can unmute yourself. Okay. All right. Uh, your word is supine. Supine? Yeah. Can I have all the information, please? Yeah, so it can be pronounced as supine or supine. It's an adjective and it comes from Latin. Uh, supine means lying on the back or with the face upward. And uh, the sense is we walked along the beach past the rows of supine bodies soaking up the sun. Supine, S-U-P-I-N-E, supine. That is correct. Next speller is speller 14. Hi. Hi. All right, uh, your word is mo uh, your word is modular. Modular, may I have all the information? Yeah, so uh, the only pronunciation is modular. It's an adjective and it comes from New Latin. And it means capable of being easily joined to or arranged with other parts or units. And the sense is a modular system allows six different configurations of just two key components. Modular, am I saying it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Modular, M-O-D-U-L-A-R, modular. That is correct. Next speller is speller 20. Hi. Hi. All right, uh, your word is cudgel. Cudgel, can I please have the definition? Um, a cudgel is a short, heavy stick used as an instrument for punishment or a weapon. Cudgel, can I please have the language of origin? Uh, cudgel comes from Middle English. Cudgel, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, cudgel. Cudgel, me, you, me, G, E, L, cudgel. That is correct. Next speller is speller 24. Ready. All right, uh, your word is grouse. Can I have all information, please? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is grouse. It's a noun and it comes from an unknown origin. Uh, so it's any of various plump ground dwelling birds of northern North America and Eurasia. And the sense is a grouse plucked a small fish out of the water with her beak. Grouse. G R O U S E. 
That is correct. Next speller is speller 26. Hi. Hi. All right, uh, your word is lexicon. Lexicon. Can I have the definition, please? Yeah, um, lexicon means the vocabulary of a subject or of an op occupational group. Lexicon, can I, am I pronouncing this correctly? Lexicon. Uh, it sounds right. Can I have the language of origin, please? Uh, it comes from late Greek plus an English part. Lexicon, lexicon. L E X I C O N, lexicon. That is correct. Next speller is speller 30. Hello. All right, uh, your word is gourd or gourd. Gourd. Uh, can I have all the information, please? Yeah, so the only two pronunciations are gourd and gourd. It's a noun and it comes from Middle English. Uh, the definition is a fruit that, that is hard shelled, inedible, and used often for decoration, and it comes from a vine. And the sentence is, in the vegetable market, even the prices of locally grown bitter gourd, ash pumpkin, and cucumber are rising. Okay, thank you. Um, gourd, am I pronouncing it correctly? It sounds right. Okay. Gourd. G-O-U-R-D. Gourd. That is correct. Next speller is speller 32. Hi. Hi. All right, uh, your word is foible. Foible. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, foible. Can I have the definition, please? Uh, it means a uh, minor moral flaw or weakness in personal character. May I have a sentence, please? Yeah. Um, the sentence is, I shall never attempt to palliate my own foible by exposing the error of another. Foible. F-O-I-B-L-E. Foible. That is correct. Next speller is speller 35. Hi. All right. Um, your word has a near homonym. So uh, the word is extant. It's an adjective and it means still in existence or surviving. Extant, can I have all the information? Yeah, so it can be pronounced extant, extant, or extant is an adjective and it comes from Latin and it means still in existence or surviving. And the sense is we have some ex, ex we have some extant parish records from the 16th century. Extant E X T E N T extant. Hold on. That is correct. Next speller is speller 63. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is prowess. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the, your word is prowess. And again. A uh, prowess. Give me all the information about this word. Yeah, so uh, the word is prowess or prowess. It's a noun and it comes from Middle English. And uh, it means an extraordinary ability or excellence. And uh, the sense is he always brags about his prowess as a footballer. Repeat the word. Uh, the word is prowess. Mm. Prowess. P 
R O W E S S prowess. That is correct. Next speller is speller 67. Okay, I'm ready. All right, uh, your word is stalwart. Stalwart, may I have the meaning please? Uh, it means stout, sturdy, brave, valiant, or resolute. Mm, can you repeat the word, please? Uh, the word is stalwart. May I have it in a sentence, please? Uh, it means, uh, the sense is she has been a stalwart supporter of the party for many years. Mm, stalwart. Am I saying it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Stalwart. S. T A L W A R stalwart. Hold on. Uh, yes, you're correct. Uh, the next speller is speller seventy-three. Hello. All right. Uh, your word is pungent. Pungent, sorry. Can I have all the information, please? Uh, yeah, so the word is pungent. It's an adjective. It comes from Latin. And uh, the, it means having a stiff and sharp... It means having a stiff and sharp point or prickly pointed. Uh, the sense is, I sat down to have a cup of wonderfully pungent Turkish coffee. Pungent. P-U-N-G-E-N-T. Pungent. That is correct. Next speller is speller 80. All right. Uh, your word is bowsprit. Can you repeat the word, please? Uh, the word is bowsprit. Bowsprit. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Okay. Can I have all the information, please? Yeah, so uh, the only pronunciation is bowsprit. It's a noun and it comes from Middle English. It means uh, a large spar projecting forward from the stem of a ship to carry forward and to support the masts. And uh, the sense is the bowsprit, mast, and sails were recovered in black fabric. Bowsprit, am I saying it correctly? Um. I think, listen to the end, it's bow sprit. Sprit? Yeah. Okay. B O U S E R I T, bow sprit. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is B O W S P R I T. Good, good job. The next speller is speller 104. Hello. Hi. All right, uh, your word is exemplar. Exemplar, may I have all the information please? Yeah, so it can be pronounced exemplar, exemplar, or exemplar. It's a noun and it comes from Middle English. And uh, the definition is one that serves as an ideal model or a typical or a standard specimen. And uh, the sense is the king's mansion is an exemplar of a house of the time period. Exemplar. E X E M P L A R. Exemplar. That is correct. Uh, the next speller is speller 108. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is banal. Can I have the word again? Uh, the word is banal. Banal. May I have all the information, please? Yeah, so it can be pronounced banal, banal, uh, banal, or banal. It's an adjective, and it means wanting originality, freshness, or novelty. 
Um, it comes from French. And the sense is the new album of the popular singer avoids being banal and predictable. Banal. B A N A L. Banal. That is correct. The next speller is speller 113. Hi. All right. Uh, your word has a homonym, so the pronunciation is pedal. It's a verb and it comes from Middle English. And it means to sell something, especially small goods, by going from place to place. So, pedal. Can you please give me all the information except for the definition? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is pedal. It's a verb and it's um, Middle English. And uh, the sense is Jonathan began, began to pedal newspapers to earn money for his college tuition. Pedal. P E D D L E pedal. That is correct. Next speller is speller one hundred and thirty eight. Hello. Uh, all right. Uh, your word is Auburn. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is Auburn. Auburn, may I please have all of the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is Auburn. It's an adjective and it comes from Middle English. Um, it means having reddish brown hair. And uh, the sentence is Jessica has long Auburn hair that reached almost to her waist. Auburn, am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Auburn. A U B U R N Auburn. That is correct. And that is the last speller of this round. We have all right, yeah, we have 15 spellers remaining. Um, that's the end of round two, like Simone said. So um, we're going to take a quick break after this round. It is 33, so let's all try to come back by 37. Um, and just keep your cameras on. You guys can go um, leave and grab water and other things. And judges. OK, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, speller two. Sorry, I was muted. Okay. Uh, your word is unappeasable. Unappeasable. Can I have all the information, please? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is unappeasable. It's an adjective and it comes from Middle English. Uh, it means not able to bring to a state of quiet, ease, or contentment. And the sentence is, Harry has an unappeasable obsession with computer games. Unappeasable. U-N-A-P-P-E-A-S-E-A-B-L-E. -E. Sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is U-N-A-P-P-E-A-S-A-B-L-E. -E. Good job. The next filler is filler 14. Hi. Hi. Um, all right. Uh, your word is uh, okay. uh, your word uh, is pri primatologist. Primatologist, may I have the definition? Yeah, so a primatologist is a specialist in the branch of zoology dealing with the highest order of mammals, including humans, monkeys, and lemurs. Primatologist, may I have all the rest of the information? Uh, yeah, so the pronunciation is primatologist. It's a noun and it's uh, new Latin plus Middle English parts. And uh, the sense is the primatologist is observing monkeys in the wild. Primatologist. P R 
I M A T O L O G um, I S T. That is correct. The next spell is Speller 20. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, your word has a near homonym, so I'll give you the information. So the word is lassie. It's a noun, and it's made up of Middle English parts, and it means a girl or a young woman. Lassie. Can I please have the language of origin? Uh, it's made up of Middle English parts. Can I please have the definition again? It means a girl or a young woman. Lassie. L A S S I E. Lassie. That is correct. Next speller is speller 24. Ready. All right. Uh, your word has a homonym, so I'll give you the information. Uh, the word is phishing. It's a noun, and it means the, fraudul the fraudulent practice of sending emails purporting to be from reputable, reputable companies in order to induce individuals to, to reveal personal information. Can I have all information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is phishing. It's a noun, and it's from Middle English. It means the practice of sending emails purporting to be from reputable companies in order to induce individuals to reveal personal information. And the sense is Jared never responds to email requests for personal information to avoid being a victim of phishing. Phishing. F I S S I N G. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. Good job. Uh, the next speller is speller 26. Hi. All right, uh, your word is strudel. Strudel, can I have the definition please? Yeah, it's a pastry consisting of a paper-thin dough rolled up with any of various fruit fillings and baked. Strudel, can I have the language of origin, please? Uh, it's a German word. Can I have the art of speech, please? Uh, it's strudel. strudel is a noun. Strudel. S T R E U D E L. Strudel. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is S T R U D E L. Good job. Next speller is speller 30. Hello. All right. Uh, your word has a near homonym, so I'll give you the information. Uh, the word is palette. It's a noun, and it's from French, and it means a thin board or tablet used by painters for holding and mixing colors. Uh, it's palette, right? Uh, the yep. word palette. Okay. Um, can I have all the information again, please? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is palette. It's a noun, and it's from French. It's a thin border tablet used by painters for holding and mixing colors. And the sense is Luke mixed the colors on his palette to start painting on the canvas. Okay, palette. Um, P-A-L-L-E-T-E, -E, palette. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is P-A-L-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. But good job. Next speller is speller 32. Hey. All right. Uh, your word is linguaphone. Linguaphone. Can you please repeat the word again? 
Uh, the word is linguaphone. Um, can I have the definition, please? Yeah, so it's a family of musical instruments which have one or more long, thin plates that are fixed at one end and free at the other end to be plucked, causing the plate to vibrate. Can I have the alternate pronunciation? Uh, it's just the one, linguaphone. Um, can I have the language of origin? Uh, it's made of two Latin parts and a Greek part. Um, can you please put the word in a sentence? Yeah, uh, the Ambira is a linguaphone of southeastern Africa made out of a gourd that serves as a resonating box. Linguaphone. L I N G U A P H O N E. Linguaphone. That is correct. Next speller is speller 35. Hi. All right. All right. Uh, your word is teraqueous. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is teraqueous. Can I have all the information? Yeah, so uh, it can be pronounced teraqueous, teraqueous, or teraqueous. It's an adjective, and it's made up of a Latin and an English part, and it means consisting of land and water. Uh, the sense is the earth is a terraqueous globe. Terraqueous. T-E-R-R-A-Q- E O U S. Terry Quiff. That is correct. Next speller is speller 63. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is technopreneur. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is technopreneur. Can you repeat the word again? Uh, the word is technopreneur. Give me all the information about this word. Yeah, so it can be pronounced technopreneur, technopreneur, or technopreneur. It's a noun, and it's made up of Greek and French parts. Uh, it, the definition is a person who starts their own business and makes use of computers and other latest scientific discoveries to develop something. And uh, the sense is Randy is a real technopreneur and wants to develop a website for DIY plumbing services. Can you repeat the word again? Uh, the word is technopreneur. Technopreneur. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Okay. Technopreneur. T E C H N O P R E N U R E Technopreneur. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is T. E C H N O P R E N E U R. But good job. Next is speller 67. I'm ready. All right. Uh, can you keep your hands up? 
All right, uh, your word is subservience. Subservience. May I have the meaning, please? Yeah, it means excessive willingness to submit to the control or demands of another. Subservience. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is subservience. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just a slight one. It can be subservience or subservience. Okay, subservience. May I have it in a sentence, please? Yeah, uh, the dog demonstrated his complete subservience to his owner. Subservience. F U B S E R V I E N C E. Subservience. That is correct. Next speller is speller 73. Hello. Hi. Uh, can you keep your hands up? Oh, uh, you're muted as well. Oh, sorry. All right. Uh, your word is abalone. Uh, you abalone. Need to keep your yeah. Uh, can I have the definition, please? Uh, abalone is a gastropod mollusk that clings to rocks tenaciously with the broad muscular foot. Abalone. Can I have all the information, please? Yeah, uh, the word is abalone. It's a noun, and it comes from American Spanish. Uh, it, the definition is a gastropod mollusk that clings to rocks tenaciously with a broad muscular foot. Uh, you need to keep your hands up. And uh, the sense is the abalone shell is twice as tough as modern high-tech ceramics. Abalone. A B A L O N E. Abalone. That is correct. Next speller is speller 104. Hello. All right. Uh, your word is liquescent. Liquescent. Also, may can, have you your, your, can you keep your hands open? Thank you. Um, may I have all the information? Yeah, uh, so the word is liquescent. It's an adjective and it comes from Latin. Uh, it means tending to become fluid or melting. And uh, the sense is Emma placed the liquescent sealed packages back into the freezer. Liquescent. Could you repeat the language of origin, please? Uh, it's Latin. Liquescent. L. I. Q. U. E. S. C. E. N. T. Liquescent. That is correct. Next speller is speller 108. Hello. All right. Uh, your word is ambivalent. Ambivalent. Can I have all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is ambivalent. It's an adjective and it comes from Latin. Uh, it means having mixed feelings or contradictory ideas about something or someone. And uh, the sentence is, the jury is ambivalent about the defendant's guilt. Ambivalent. A, M, B, I, V, A, L, E, N, T. Ambivalent. That is correct. Next speller is speller 113. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is cornucopia. Cornucopia. Can you please give me all the information? Yeah, uh, the word is cornucopia or cornucopia. It's a noun and it comes from late Latin. Uh, it means a curved goat's horn overflowing with fruit, flowers, and grain used as a symbol of abundance. And the sentence is Amanda bought a beautiful cornucopia for the dining table centerpiece. Cornucopia. C O 
R N U T O P I A cornucopia. That is correct. Next speller is speller one hundred and thirty-eight. All right. Uh, your word is boulevard. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is boulevard. Boulevard. M may I please have all of the information? Yeah, so it can be pronounced boulevard, boulevard, or boulevard. It's a noun and it comes from French and it means a broad thoroughfare, often having grass plots with trees along the center or between curbs and sidewalks. And uh, the sense is the boulevard has been historically known for its scenic views. Boulevard? Am I pronouncing it correctly? It sounds right. It can be boulevard, boulevard, or boulevard. Boulevard. B O U L E V A R D Boulevard. That is correct. And that is the last speller of the round. Awesome. Okay, so we are at our top 10 spellers. So round of applause for all of you guys. Um, at this point, every single one of you will be going home with some sort of prize in money. So that's really awesome. Congratulations to you all. Um, we are just gonna go ahead and go straight into round four from here then. Uh, oh, and all of you will get trophies too. I forgot to mention that. But yes, we'll go straight into round four with Speller 14. Hi. Um, okay. All right, uh, your word is aviophobia. Aviophobia, does this come from the root a, the, um, actually, never mind. Does this come from Greek phobia, meaning fear? Yes, it does. May I have the definition? Oh, yeah. So, um, aviophobia means an irrational or exaggerated fear of flying. Aviophobia. May I have all the information? Yeah, so it can be pronounced aviophobia or aviophobia. It's a noun, and it's uh, made up of... Uh, just a second... Uh, it comes from French, uh, it's made up of French part, a Middle English part, and a new Latin and Greek part. And uh, it means an irrational or exaggerated fear of flying. And uh, the sense is Martin has an aviophobia and prefers driving to flying even for long distances. Aviophobia, am I saying it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Aviophobia. A, V. I, B, I, A, aviophobia. Sorry, can you can you say it again? You just cut out. And also, can you keep your hands a up? Sorry, aviophobia, A V I O B H O B I A, aviophobia. That is correct. Next speller is speller twenty. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is oolong. Oolong? Yeah, the word is oolong. Oolong. Can I please have the definition? Um, oolong is a tea that is partially fermented before drying and combines the characteristics of black and green teas. Oolong, can I please have all the information? Yeah, so... Uh, there's only a slight alternate. It can be oolong or oolong. It's a noun and it comes from Chinese. It's a tea that is partially fermented before drying and combines the characteristics of black and green teas. And the sense is the partially fermented oolong tea is popular in Asia. Oolong, am I saying it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. 
Too long. O O L O N G. Too long. That is correct. Uh, speller 32 is next. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is fustanella. Um, can you give me the language of origin? Uh, fustanella is an Italian word. May I have any alternate pronunciations? Um, it can be pronounced fustanella or fustanella. Um, may I have the definition, please? Yeah, uh, fustanella is a short, stiff skirt, usually pleated, made of white cotton or linen, worn by men in some parts of the Balkans. Um, may I have the sentence, please? Yeah, so uh, Rodney bought a fustanella when he visited Bulgaria, but he hardly ever wore it. Fustanella. F U S T A N E L L A. Fustanella. That is correct. Next speller is speller 35. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is Pollyanna. Pollyanna. Can you give me all the information? Yeah, so the word is Pollyanna, it's a noun, and it comes from an American fictional name. Um, it means an excessively cheerful or optimistic person. And uh, the sentence is, Kathy's Pollyanna attitude gets her in trouble at work, sometimes as her unrelenting optimism is considered as irresponsible. Pollyanna. P O. L Y A N N A. Pollyanna. I'm sorry, that is the correct spelling. P O L L Y A N N A. Good job. Next speller is 67. Hello. Hi. All right. Uh, can you keep your hands up? Uh, your word is boysenberry. Boysenberry. May I have the meaning, please? Yeah, so uh, boysenberry is a very large bramble fruit developed by crossing various plants and valued for canning and preserving of, the, of a shrubby plant that bears fruit. Boysenberry. May I have it in a sentence, please? Yeah, uh, Danny bought boysenberry ice cream at the local store. Boysenberry, may I have the language of origin? Um, it's from an American name plus an English part. Boysenberry, B-O-Y-S-E-N-B-E-R-R-Y, boysenberry. That's correct. Next speller is speller 73. Hello. Uh, yeah, you need to unmute yourself as well. All right, uh, your word is maquette. Maquette, can I have the definition? Um, it's a small model or study in three dimensions for either a sculptural or an architectural project. Maquette. Can I have all the information? Yeah, so the word is maquette or maquette. It's a noun and it comes from French and it means a small model or study in three dimensions for either an architectural or a sculptural project. And uh, the sense is the architect carried a sketchbook, drawing and maquette to the construction site. Maquette. Does it come from French? Yeah, it's a French word. Maquette. M-A-C-H-E-T. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is 
N A Q U E T T E. Not hand. And um, good job. Hi. Speller is speller 104. Hello. All right. Uh, your word is woe be gone. Woe be gone. May I have all the information? Yeah, so it can be pronounced woe be gone or woe be gone. It's an adjective and it comes from Middle English. It means exhibiting a condition of misery, sorrow, or suffering. And then the sense is the dog sits by the door with a woe be gone expression whenever he wants to go for a walk. Woe be gone. Woe be gone. W O E B E G O N E. Woe be gone. That is correct. Next speller is speller 108. Hello. All right. Uh, your word is Belladonna. Belladonna. May I have all the information? Yeah, so uh, the only pronunciation is belladonna. It's a noun and it comes from Italian. Um, it's a poisonous plant of the nightshade family. Uh, can you keep your eyes on the screen? And yeah, having, pur having purplish red flowers and black berries and alkaloidal derived from this plant that is used in medicine. And of the senses, the belladonna leaves and roots are used in homeopathy and other alternative medicine as a remedy for asthma and pain. Belladonna. B-E-L-L-A-G-O-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Belladonna. That is correct. The next speller is speller 113. All right, uh, your word is durable. Durable. Can you give me all the information? Yeah, so it can be pronounced durable, durable, or durable. It's a noun and it comes from Middle English. And it means a vessel used in religious services for burning incense. And uh, the sense is the incense from, from the durable filled the church hall. Durable. T H U R I B L E. Durable. That is correct. Next speller is speller 138. All right. Uh, your word is Amarino. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is amarino. Amarino? May yeah. I please have all of the information? Yeah, so it can be pronounced amarino or amarino. It's a noun and it comes from Italian. It means a beautiful child or a cupid. And uh, the sense is Benjamin's grandmother has an amarino statue in her backyard. Amarino? Yeah. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is Amarino or Amarino. Amarino. Am I pronouncing it correctly? It sounds right. Amarino. A M Amore Amorino, can I start over? Oh uh, yeah. Amorino. A M O R I N Oh, Amarina? That is correct. Thank you. 
And that is the end of the round. All right, we have eight spellers at the end of this round. And um, just want to say congratulations to our two um, ninth placers, Speller 35, Christian, and Speller 73, Maria. Um, both of you guys placed ninth and will be getting $100 as well as trophies. So congratulations to you both. Um, Shaba, uh, looks like there's an appeal. Just wait a minute, okay? Okay. Spellers, you guys can all take a break for a bit and we'll try to come back around eight or we'll try to come back around 15. Um, still waiting on one more speller. I think he's our first speller in the round two. Okay, Fai's on your back. Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and get started with round five then with speller 14, Fai's on. Bye. Sorry, I'm muted. Okay, uh, your word is apolog. Apologue? Yeah. May have the language of origin? Uh, it's French from Latin from Greek. Apologue. May I have the definition? Uh, it's an allegorical narrative, such as a beast fable that's usually used to uh, convey a moral. Apologue? Uh, it's apologue. Apologue. Does this come from Greek logos meaning word? You're on the right track, yeah. Okay. Apologue. May I have all the information? Yeah, so the word is, there's two slight different pronunciations. It can be apologue or apologue. It's not that much difference. Uh, it's a noun and it's French from Latin from Greek. And it's an allegorical na narrative that, such as a beast fable, usually intended to convey a moral. And the sense is the institution produced an apologue to convey moral virtue in an amusing manner with animals as characters. Uh, can you bring your hands up? May I have the uh, sentence one more time? Uh, the institution produced an apologue to convey a moral virtue in an amusing manner with animals as characters. Apologue. May I have all the information one more time? Uh, the word is apologue. It's a noun and it's French from Latin from Greek. It's an allegorical narrative usually intended to convey a moral and the sense is the institution produced an apologue to convey a moral virtue in an amusing manner. Apologue. Oh. May I have all the, I mean, may I have the alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's apologue or apple apologue. Apologue. Not that much. Apologue. Um, could you say the word for us again, please? Apologue. Okay. Apologue. A P. A L O G U E Ablog. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is A P O L O G U E. But good job. Next speller is speller 20. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is Salonel. Salonel? Yeah. Follow now. Can I please have the definition? Yeah, it's a mud volcano whose eruptions contain salt. Follow now. Can I please have all the all of the information? Yeah. So the only pronunciation is salonel. It's a noun, and it's, and it's from French. Um, 
It's a mud volcano whose eruptions contain salt. And the sense is the Salinelle mud volcanoes can be potentially dangerous due to sudden gas emissions. Salinelle, am I saying it correctly? Uh, it sounds correct. Salinelle, does this have sal meaning salt from Greek? S A L. O N E L L E Salonel. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is S A L I N E L L E. But good job. Thank you. Um, just a quick note, um, spellers. If you're if you misspell in this round, just um, stay in the Zoom call and um, I'll do a formal notification at the end of the round for you to leave. We'll continue to the next spelling. Hi. All right, uh, 32, okay. Okay, uh, your word is RAS. Can you repeat the word, please? Uh, the word is RAS. It's uh, any of various marine fishes having powerful teeth, and a brilliant color. Can I please have the language of origin? Uh, it's from Cornish. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, this is just the one, RAS. RAS, am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Um, can you please put in a sentence? Yeah, uh, the grouper and wrasse fish species are largely dependent on rocky and coral reefs. Wrasse. Wrasse. W R A S S. Wrasse. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is W-R-A-S-S-E. -S -S -E. Good job. Next speller is speller 67. Hello. Hi. All right, uh, your word is serograph. Serograph, am I saying it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. May I have the meaning, please? Uh, it's a printed design produced by the silkscreen process. Serograph. Oh, sorry, it's serograph. And also, Ser can you bring your hands up? Serograph. Yeah. Can I have all the information, please? Yeah, so the um, it can be pronounced serograph or serograph. Um, it's a noun and it's made up of a Latin and a Greek part. Uh, it's a printed design produced by the silkscreen process. And the sense is Robert has taken classes in lithography, uh, serographs, and digital imaging. Uh, the word is serograph. Serograph. Can you please repeat the meaning? It's a printed design produced by the silkscreen process. Serograph. Serograph. S E R O G R A P H. Serograph. I'm sorry, this is incorrect. The correct spelling is S E R I G R A P H, but good job. Next speller is speller 104. Hello. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is Takata. Takata. Can you keep your hands up? Yeah. May I have all the information? Yeah, so uh, the pronunciation is Takata. It's a noun and it comes from Italian. 
Uh, it means a brilliant musical competition composition, usually for pipe organs or harpsichords in freestyle with brilliant passage work. And uh, the sense is Perry sat down at the piano and launched into box staccata and C major. Takata. T O C C A T A. Takata. That is correct. Next. Thank you so much. One hundred and eight. All right. Uh, your word is oxygen. Oxygen. Can I have all the information? Yeah, so oxygen is an instance of an actor instance of slaughtering. Can I have all the information, please? Yeah, so the pronunciation is oxygen. It's a noun and it comes from Middle English and it means an actor instance of slaughtering. And of the sense is the environmentalists prote protested the oxygen of elephants in ivory poaching. Oxygen. O C C I S I O N. Oxygen. That is correct. Next speller is speller 113. Hi. All right, uh, your word is sericious. Sericious. Can you give me all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is sericious. It's an adjective and it's from late Latin. It means having a fuzzy surface specifically covered with soft silky hairs. And uh, the sense is the leaves of the plant have a silvery gray appearance and sericious uh, texture. Sericious. S E R R I T I O U S. Sericious. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is S E R I C E O U S. But good job. Next speller is speller 138. All right. Uh, your word is cacawepi. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is cacawepi. Cacawepi? Uh, sorry, it's cacawepi. Cacawepi? Yeah. Cacawepi. May I please have all of the information? Yeah, so it can be pronounced kakoepi, kakoepi, or kakoepi. Uh, it's a noun and it's from a new Latin and a Greek part, and it means bad pronunciation. Uh, the sense is the correct pronunciation is indicated in a way that will help the reader avoid kakoepi. Kakoepi. Does this come from the Greek? Kakos meaning bad? Yes, it does. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is kakoepi, kakoepi, or kakoepi. Kakoepi. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Kakoepi. C A C O E P Y Kakoepi. That is correct. And that is the end of the round. Three spellers are remaining. But good job, everybody. Amazing. Okay, so we have our top three spellers. Um, just very quickly want to go through our uh, spellers who've placed fourth. So um, we have speller 14, Faison, speller 20, Ahil, speller 30, Anjali, 
speller 67, Siona, and speller 113, Gary. All of you have placed fourth. And so um, basically, because there's five of you that have placed fourth place, um, we will be giving you each a trophy for the fourth place rank, and then um, a $120 each as part of your cash prize. And um, okay. the yeah, just the way we're doing that for full transparency is that um, fourth through eighth place, which is what you guys have all kind of placed around, is fourth place is 200, everything else is 100. And so we're dividing that prize money evenly between all of you. And so that's why um, you're all getting $120. But uh, congratulations to all five of you. You guys are awesome spellers. And um, yeah, um, we are at our top three now. So um, we just recognizing them really quickly. Um, so top three spellers are Speller 104, Ananya, Speller 108, Advait, and then Speller 138, Bruhat. And so um, what we're gonna do from here, just to explain rules a little bit more, um, we have our list of words, we're just going to continue normally. Um, and we're going to go for 10 more words, or sorry, 10 more rounds, which is 30 words. And so um, we will basically do 10 more rounds and then, um, if we still have some spellers remaining um, or multiple spellers remaining, then they will be declared co-champions. Um, but let's see how this goes from now. Um, do we want to take a break or should we just go ahead into round six? Great. Um, yeah, so we have everyone then. So um, at our top three. And so um, like I mentioned, we'll go for 10 more rounds with whoever's remaining if we get to that point. Um, will be declared as co-champions. Um, but other than that, it'll just work as normal. Um, and we also would like one person each for each of these places. So um, just to be prepared, um, if multiple of you, um, or if like two of you, I guess, miss spell in one round, we will probably do a tiebreaker. Um, so yeah, that's logistics, but let's you know focus round by round and um, we'll start spelling. So yeah, good luck everyone. And we'll start with speller 104. Hello. All right, uh, your word is terrazzo. Terrazzo. May I have all the information please? Yeah, so it can be pronounced terrazzo, terrazzo, terrazzo. Yeah, those are the three pronunciations. Uh, it's a noun and it's Italian, and it means a mosaic flooring consisting of chips of marble or granite set in freshly placed mortar and polished to give a smooth surface. And uh, the sense is the ballroom floors are covered in polished green terrazzo. Terrazzo. Also, terrazzo. keep your hands. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, you're good. Terrazzo. T E R R A Z Z O Terrazzo. That is correct. Uh, that is correct. Next speller is speller 108. Yeah, Maddie. All right. Uh, your word is melange. Melange. May I have all the information? Yeah, so it can be pronounced mélange or mélange. It's a noun and it's from French. And it's a mixture or a group of different things or people or a medley. And the sense is the dessert is made of a, made of a mélange of summer fruits with chilled custard sauce. Mélange. M E L a N A Melange. That is correct. Next speller is speller 138. All right. Uh, your word is omnilogent. Omnilogent. May I please have all of the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is omnilogent. It's an adjective and it's made up of a Middle English plus Latin parts. Um, it's the definition means reading everything or familiar with all or a great amount of literature. And uh, the sense is the omnilogent professor was an esteemed member of the university linguistic department. 
Omnilligent. Can you please repeat the word? Yeah, uh, the word is omnilligent. Omnilligent. Am I pronouncing the word correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Omnilligent. O M N I L E G E N T. Omnilligent. That is correct. Thank you. On to round seven. Hello. Okay. Uh, your word is coral cello. Coral cello. May I have all the information? Yeah. Uh, so the only pronunciation is coral cello. It's a noun and it's from French or medieval Latin plus Latin parts. Um, the definition is a keyboard instrument like the piano, but with electromagnets vibrating the strings and producing an organ-like effect with string quality. And uh, the sense is Nathan plays both the piano and the choral cello. Choral cello. C-H-O-R-A-L-C-E-L-L. Oh, all cello. That is correct. Next speller is speller 108. I'm ready. All right. Okay, uh, your word is Nicolite. Nicolite, may I have all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is Nicolite. It's a noun and it comes from New Latin. Uh, it means a mineral composed essentially of a nickel arsenide with a metallic luster and occurring in massive hexagonal crystalline form. And uh, the sense is the nickelite mineral usually occurs associated with copper and silver ores. Nicolite. N I C K E L. I, T, E, Nikolai. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is N I C C O L I T E. Good job. Next spelling is 138. All right, uh, your word is PLA. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is PLA. <laughs> PLA, may I have all, may I please have all of the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is PLA. It's a noun and it comes from French and it means an ice ax used in mountaineering. And uh, the sense is the mountaineer used a PLA to cut footholds in the ice. PLA, can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is PLA. Wait, is this word French? Yeah, it's French. PLA, am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, it sounds right, it's PLA. PLA. P I O L E T P L A. That is correct. Thank you. On to round eight. Oh wait, just really quick. Um, so that end of round seven. Um, just want to recognize our third place winner. Then, um, so Stellar one hundred eight Advipe. Um, you'll be getting a trophy and five hundred dollars. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we can move to round eight with our top two. Okay. Hello. Hi. Okay. Uh, your word is solaret. Solaret. May I have all the information? Yeah. So the word is solaret. It's a noun and it comes from French. Uh, it means a flexible steel shoe forming part of a medieval suit of armor. 
end of the sentence is the solaret is sometimes provided with the pointed tip in order to serve as a weapon. Solaret. Does this come from um, the French diminutive ending et? I don't see that here. Does this come from the French masculine diminutive ending et? You're on the right track. Solaret. S O L L E R E T. Solaret. That is correct. Thank you. Next spell is spell 138. All right. Uh, your word is burlock. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is burlock. Burlock. Can I please? May I please have all of the information? Yeah, so it can be pronounced burlock or burloque. It's a noun and it comes from French and it means a drumbeat used as a signal for certain fatigue duties, such as breaking ranks. And uh, the sense is the loud noise from the burlock alerted the fire, brig the fire brigade serving in shift. Burlock. Can you repeat the pronunciations? Uh, it could be burlock or burlock. Burlock. Can I have? May I please have the definition? It's a drumbeat used as a signal for certain fatigue duties, such as breaking ranks or a corresponding trumpet call. Burlock. Can you pronounce the word again? Uh, it can be burlock or burloke. Burlock. Am I pronouncing it correctly? It sounds right. Yeah. Burlock. B. U. R. L O C K or lock? I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is B E R L O Q U E. Thank you. Hello. All right. Okay. Uh, your word is brachioplasty. Brachioplasty. May I have the language of origin? Yeah. Um, just give me a second. Yeah, so it's made up of Latin and Greek parts. Brachioplasty. Does this come from the Latin plasti, meaning able to mold? Um, Sorry. Yeah. Um, I don't think I see that here. Yeah. Repeat the definition. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a medical term. It's plastic surgery used to reduce sagging or tighten upper arm skin, or it's also called an arm lift. Does this come from the Greek brachy, meaning arm? You're on the right track. Brachioplasty. B R 
A C H Y O P L A S T Y Brachioplasty. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is B R A C H I O P L A S T Y. But good job. All right. Um, then with that, we get speller 138 back in. So it will be both of you continuing now from round 10. All right. Okay. Uh, so, Ananya, yeah, Ananya, you get another word. So this is this okay. one. Okay. So this word has a homonym. So the word is mark. It's a noun and it's from French and it means a brand or make of a product, especially used for sports cars. Mark. Mark. May have the language of origin. Uh, it's a French word. Mark. M. A. R. Q. U. E. Mark. That is correct. Thank you. Um, next speller, speller 138. All right. Okay. Uh, your word is staphyloma. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is staphyloma. Staphyloma? Yeah. Staphyloma. May I please have all of the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is staphyloma. Uh, it's a noun. And uh, the origin or the meaning is a protrusion of the cornea or sclera of the mammalian eye. And uh, the origin is Middle French from Late Latin from Greek. Staphyloma? Yeah. Can, may, can you please repeat the definition? Yeah, it's a protrusion of the cornea or sclera of the mammalian eye. Staphyloma. Can you pronounce the word again? Yeah, the word is staphyloma. Staphyloma. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Staphyloma. May I please have the language of origin again? Uh, it's Middle French from Late Latin from Greek. Staphyloma. S T A P H Y L O M A Staphyloma. That is correct. Thank Next you. round is round eleven. Hello. Hi. All right. All right. Uh, uh, your word is Carillon. Carillon. May I have all the information? Yeah, so it can be pronounced Carillon, Carillon, Carrion, Carrion, or Carillion. It's a set of fixed bells pitched in chromatic series of at least two octaves and sounded by hammers controlled by a keyboard. Uh, Carillon. Yeah, it's a French word. Oh, okay, um, Caroline. C A R I L L O N. Caroline? That is correct. Thank you. All right. 
138. Okay, uh, your word is cold. Sorry, your word is cold ye. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is cold ye. Cold ye. May I please have all of the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is cold ye. It's a noun and it's from Hindi. It's a jewel. A jeweled plume worn in India on a turban. And uh, the sentence is Professor Singh happily loaned his grandfather's Kogi to the museum. Kogi. Can you please pronounce the word again? Yeah, the word is Kogi. Kogi. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. Kogi. E. U L G E E Kogi. That is correct. Next round is round twelve. Hello. Hi. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, your word is transcena. Transcena. May I have all the information? Yeah, so uh, the word is transcena. That's the only pronunciation. It's a noun and it's from Latin. Uh, it's a metal or screen Latin, a metal or screen lat lattice enclosing a shrine. And uh, the sense is the church is well known for its beautiful transcena. 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 T R A N S E N N A. Transcena. That is correct. Thank you. Okay, uh, 138. All right, uh, your word is QP. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is QP. QP? Yeah. May I please have all of the information? Yeah, so it can be pronounced QP or QP, but I think QP, that's the main pronunciation. Um, it's a trademark, and it's used for a small chubby doll with a top knot of hair. And uh, the sentence is, Rebecca's grandma gave her a QP doll for Christmas. QP? Yeah. Can you please repeat the pronunciation? Uh, it's just QP. QP. May I please have the definition again? Yeah, it's uh, a trademark used for a small chubby doll with the top knot of hair. QP, am, am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, it sounds right. QP. E. U. P. I. QP. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is. K-E-W-P-I-E. -E. Good job. Thank you. Hello. All right. Uh, your word is campesino. Campesino. May I have all the information? Yeah, so the only pronunciation is campesino. It's a noun and it's from Spanish. It's a Latin American peasant farmer or laborer. And the sense is the campesino irrigated the tiny corn patch that fed his family. Campesino. C-A-M-P-E-S-I-N-O. Campesino. That is correct. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, you are the champion for the junior spell to be. So, congratulations. Thank you. Hey, yeah, so uh, just to go through this, we have our second place winner, um, which is Speller 138 Brew Hut. And so you'll be getting a trophy and a $700 cash prize. So congratulations, you did awesome. 
And our first place champion is Stella 104, Ananya, um, who gets a crash prize of $1,500. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Congratulations, Ruhut. Awesome. Congratulations, Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, cool. Yeah. Congratulations to the both of you. And um, also thank you to our judges, um, Sylvie and Simone for helping out today. And um, yeah, thank you all so much. Congratulations to all of the spellers who competed and uh, we will follow up with everyone about their prizes. So awesome. Um, yeah. Congratulations, Ananya. Congratulations, Bruhat. And have a good night, everybody. Thank you, Shoba. Thank you, thank you Soda. Ben. Thank you, Simone. Thank you, Sylvie. Thank you uh, it so was really much. great. And thank you, Ganesh, sir. Thank you so much for all the help. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, and my coach also helped me a lot. Yeah.